Hello, and thank you for joining us, wherever he is. Thank you for joining us today for an introduction to the sun salutation. You have reached day six of the 30-day sunrise yoga challenge, unleashing the magic of yoga. And I sincerely hope Hope, 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 hope that you are already experiencing the magic as I am. We are celebrating the sun. It is much brighter today. And even though the sun is not going to rise while we are working today, at least where I live, we are honoring the energy of beginnings. We are honoring the energy of light being shed across a world that was once in darkness. It happens to us every day. And for some of us, it might happen every minute of remembering and remembering and remembering the light is here. The sun will also rise. So let's get started. We're going to warm up. Then we're going to break down sun salutation A. Now, typically sun salutations are actually used for warm ups. Even if you're doing hatha yoga, which is not dedicated to breath being matched to movement, you still will warm up with sun salutations. I use the five, um, the five Tibetan rituals for warm-ups in these videos, but when I'm teaching class, I typically will use sun salutations. Okay, so sun A is the most basic of the three types, A, B, and C. And we are going to work through Sun A and we're going to unpack it at beginners, intermediate, and let's just call it more challenging levels, okay? So first we're going to do our five Tibetan rituals as I promised. I need to step a little bit more forward, okay, good. And I'm gonna shorten my arms just because I have a little bit less of a radius back here. So shoulders down, feet, about hip width apart. It doesn't matter because you're gonna step out in a second. Chin parallel to the ground, shoulders down, which I already said. Eyes gazing towards the ground. Let's begin. One, two, three, four, five. Close your eyes, bring your body together. Let the equilibrium find itself. Wait till the spin stops. And now let's move to camel pose. Fingertips pointing towards the ground, shoulders pinned towards the heart. You want to have a straight posture, not a straight or a straight. Your idea of straight, try to go for what it feels like for the seven chakras to be aligned. Elbows are pining, moving towards each other, saying, I love you so much, elbow. I want to see you. And they're trying to be together. Okay, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. Moving to J. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Tabletop. Shoulders pinned down. Elbows are also moving towards each other. Hands are using that lovely grip that we use when we are um, clutching the ground. Let's begin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. And our final pose is one you're going to be visiting very often today. While I'm here, I'm just gonna reference 
the journal. Don't forget to recommit to your challenge today. Why are you doing this? What did you expect to happen? What is happening? If nothing, that might be what's happening. Okay. Hands are gripping the ground. We make that L. We unfold the fingers from the L. You'll hear this a lot today. Let's push into upward facing dog. Inhaling and exhale. Rolling like a wave. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And finally, with that one, with that next inhale, find your arm if you're open to it, or just let it out in a luscious, beautiful exhale. And now let's break down sun A. So in sun salutation, you are dealing with eight poses. Let's work through them. The first pose is Tadasana. So Tadasana is one that we've already covered. Your feet are, I like to do the feet together, but you're welcome to have them a little bit apart. I like them to, I like the outsides to touch just lightly. And you're balancing on, you're making a triangle when you balance. So the points of contact are inner, bottom of the big toe, where it touches the ground um, on the foot pad, pinky toe foot pad, so that, that makes like a line, the base of the triangle, and then the heel. And then from there, just like our L and our fingers fold out, that's where your toes fold out from. They're not taking as much weight, but they're in contact with the ground and they allow that expansion. No matter what your point of contact is, when you're thinking of expansion and of this is all I need for this balance, even if it's on your hand or your arm or whatever, when you acknowledge that, it makes it easier to ground, which makes it easier to balance. So your feet are grounded into the ground and there's that spiral energy happening. It's spiraling up so that you are not tucking, not tucking and not sway. I'm sway, so that means my back is gonna go like this automatically. You're actually just, it's this place where your hips are just on top of each other. And I recommend taking the time to stand in front of a mirror and find out what, or, or use a camera to find out what the middle actually, what you think the middle feels like and what the, what being in a balanced hip actually looks like. But your the energy in your thighs, even though my toes are pointing forward, my hip bones are pointing forward, the energy is about that spiral. And so now the energy is spiraling up in this direction and there's an openness. The knees are lightly bent and I'm pushing down. And as I push down, and this is Tadasana, as I continue this spiral, my heart opens, my shoulders pin down, my posture is thinking not about back, but about through that, through the top of the head, which is where I do my headstand. And my arms rotate out, continuing that balance feeling. The eyes of my elbows pointing to, pointing away from my body. There's activity in my hands, but it is not shocked and breaking the energy. It is a light, activation through the fingertips. And that is Tadasana. That is mountain pose. So Tadasana is where we start. We'll always, in Sun Salutation A, we're always going to inhale when the body, in Sun Salutation and anything in yoga, as you know, especially if you work with me, when you inhale, you are always typically going to expand. When you exhale, you're gonna contract. And the expansion is happening here. to take care of that incredibly um, 
massive, massively larger amount of oxygen and efficiency that you're going to gain from breathing from your root and sacral chakras. Okay, so we inhale, rooting to rise. Our arms come up and over towards straight, and then we're in our next pose of the eight, which is just a light back bend. So we push down, and then we're just going to go, we might go here. That's, that does the job. What you want to do though is you want to keep your ears as if they were connected to your arms. So you're not doing this, not doing this. So a light back bend. People go farther and farther as they get warmer, but it's the rooting through the legs that anchors you and allows you to go, 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 go. And then you will be in a class and you will see that people fold all the way down. They might pop up into a, head, a handstand afterwards, but you can take this very far. Every pose can go very far. So that's the second pose is a light back bend. Then from here, so you've just done your inhale. Inhale, light back bend. Exhale, pushing down again. You're going to reach out, 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 out out from yourself. You can't reach out from yourself if you're not rooting. Rooting through those feet. Experiencing that spiral allows you to root more easily. That's how diggers work. Diggers spiral down. They don't push down, they spiral down. Thinking of that spiral energy, we're reaching out, 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 out. And you can also take swan dive to open your arms up and over. Either way, we're going to fold down into into um, standing forward bend, Uttanasana. So if the ground is not coming to you, bring the ground. If the ground is not there for you, bring the ground to you. If you're using a yoga block, it's a bit easier, but you can, this is Uttanasana right here. I also, sometimes if it's early, I will also bend my legs. So then I've got Uttanasana. What's most important is that you do your best to have your hands in the activated protective positioning, palming the basketball, palming the football, and you are in contact. All four parts, the bottom of the feet, the bottom of the hands. Hey, thanks. Just move it along. Thank you. All four parts are in contact with the ground, that is Uttanasana. You let your head finish the pose, and it's early for me. So even though I'm bendy bendy and I've been born that way and it's just a part of my life, I'm still, I'm still not gonna stretch and force. I could strain these muscles and I could strain this muscle if I let myself, so I'm seeing my hamstrings, you can't see me maybe because you're bent over. I can strain those muscles. So I've got to be super protective, especially in the morning, especially because I'm not warmed up yet. We're going through the exercises that are gonna warm us up. So these four parts are touching the ground. The eyes of the elbow again, looking at the screen, take a look at the screen right now. The eyes of the elbow, there's that spiral happening. I want them to point in the same direction as my feet, as my fingertips, as my hands. That is Uttanasana. We let our head dangle over and that's gonna complete the pose. From there, that's our exhale. Our next inhale is Urda Uttanasana. So we take our hands and we put them on our shins, on our, just above our thighs, wherever we're going to put them to bring our back to flat. Hmm. So whatever it takes to bring the back to flat is what's going to happen here. Again, the legs aren't pushing straight. It's just a simple pushing against our legs to bring our back to flat, letting our gaze stay towards the ground. In Uttanasana, our gaze was between our legs. In Arda, Utp in Arda Uttanasana, our gaze is towards the ground parallel. Our body is a flat plane to the ground. Next is our exhale. So let's recap quickly. Uttanasana. Inhaling up and over to back, slight back bend. That's second pose. Third pose. 
why did I say Uttanasana? Tadasana. Tadasana. Inhaling to back bend. Exhaling to our third pose, Uttanasana. Inhaling to our fourth pose, flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. From here, you're going to, people can jump back to Chaturanga, but I typically don't start with a jump back. We're going to put our hands activated using the activated protective grip for our hands. We're going to push those against the ground and we're going to walk, walk, walk our feet back to plank pose. Plank. We make a plank with our body. This activated grip really has to work now. Our shoulders are over our wrists. Our wrists are protected. Some people will even take plank on their fingertips in order to really bring strength to this moment in their body for headstand, handstand prep. So we're in plank. This is not plank. This is not plank. Plank. Our body makes a plane so a ball could roll down the back of our body. Our heels are as if a wall was pushing up against them. This is definitely a core workout. And from plank and our gaze is to the mat. From plank, we can knees, chest, chin to prepare for upward facing dog, which is the to prepare for upward facing dog, which is the next pose. Or as I said before, you can chaturanga. And chaturanga is where it's a it's a press, it's the beginning of a push-up. For chaturanga, one of the best directions I ever got was when I'm learning to actually do like a little baby push up. So you're just going to push up and our hands, again, the focus is on keeping that squareness to protect our body, to protect all of it. So we push up, leaving on the knees, instead of push, instead of doing the press on chaturanga with the knees up, you push up and bring the body down to prepare for upward facing dog. This plant is not going to work here. Let me just scoot you over a little bit. I can do this exercise. Great. So we take the push up, and that's going to bring our body down to that press to the bottom of a push up, or you can press down to chaturanga. So you're in plank and you press down, thinking about those shoulders staying pinned towards the heart and those elbows spiraling forward. And then from here, you're going to push. To start, I recommend starting and pushing up into Cobra. And as you get more and more warm, you'll push from Cobra. This is Cobra right here. And note what's important about Cobra is that the hands can come up, okay? So the work is happening in the back, not in the arms. If you can't lift your arms, then that means they're doing too much work. The work is happening here. The palms of my feet are facing the sky and it's zipped through that lower body for Cobra, and that makes it easier for the hands to come off the ground. And then eventually you'll push up into Upward Facing Dog, and notice that my toes are flipped towards the front of the mat. I'm hanging a little bit, and that is Upward Facing Dog. So let's recap. Our fourth pose. So our first pose was Tadasana. Our second pose, was slight back bend. Our third pose was Uttanasana, standing forward pose. Our fourth pose was flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. Our fifth pose was plank. Our sixth pose was, in whichever way you want to get there, Chaturanga. Our seventh pose is upward facing dog. And our eighth pose is downward facing dog. We're going to flip the toes under and we're going to push through our butt to make that triangle and push back. And as I push back, again, I'm rotating for the eyes of the elbows to point towards the front of the mat to keep that lovely technical um, attention to the pose. And it brings me back into downward facing dog. One breath here. And I will walk, walk, walk to the front of the mat because I've just finished my eighth pose. 
And I've just finished sun A. Another thing you can do as you get warmer is from downward facing dog, get the screen for this, you can push back so that your butt is moving over, pushing back towards the back of the mat. The hands are pushing away from the front of the mat and you do a hop to bring the two feet between the two hands and there you are, you're back at Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Exhale, that is all happening on the exhale. And flat back, inhale. And flat back, exhale. Rooting to rise, two arms come up. Slight back bend and arms fold down to Tadasana. And there you have it. You've just learned Sun Salutation A, the eight poses that go with A, and now we're going to put it all together. We're going to do three versions. We're going to do beginner, then we'll do intermediate, then we'll do regular. I'm going to cue the modifications, but when you find the one that works for you, don't go to the next one. Just stay there, and you can always rewatch this video to see what the next one is. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go on this side because it's a bit more space. Inhale, rooting to rise, Tadasana. Two arms come up overhead. Steeple grip with my hands, rooting to rise. Back bend, slight back bend. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, back to Uttanasana, walking back to plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Oh, this is beginner's version. Inhale to plank. Exhale, knees. Chest kisses the ground. Chin kisses the ground. Slight, slight, it feels like the, the body is just balancing between those two hands. And that was your exhale. Inhale to upward facing dog or cobra. Beginner's version is cobra. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale here. Exhale here to acknowledge the completion. Inhale, walk, walk, walk to the front of the mat. Exhale. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rooting to rise. Two arms up. Exhale to Tadasana. That's the beginner version. Now let's do intermediate. Inhale, two arms come up and overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, this time we're going to walk to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale. Oh, let me go all the way up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, walk, walk, walk. Front of the mat. Oh, I, excuse me, I forgot to acknowledge the pose. That's exhale and downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, walk, walk, walk to the front of the mat. Exhale, flat back. Inhale, forward fold. Exhale, rooting to rise. And exhale, Tadasana. And now let's do the advanced version. Inhale, rooting to rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, jump back, Chaturanga. Exhale, but at the bottom. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lunge. I mean, prepare, prepare to jump. Exhale, jump. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale. Forward back bend, slight back bend. Exhale, Tadasana. 
And now we have completed sun A three times, three different ways. And so you saw the small modifications that are available to you when you, based on how warm you are, based on what kind of day you're having, you might be having a really productive day, a really hard day where you just want to like get it all out. Then you might do the advanced version if you're feeling really strong and you got a lot of energy to burn. You might be feeling really gentle and doing the beginner's day. The beginner's version, I do whatever I want. And <laughs> obviously work where you are. So let's close today with a simple grounding experience. Let's get bolsters, so your yoga block, your pillows, whatever you're using, to support that hip opening in the, as you sit in this easy pose. And let's have, if you're feeling like you need a little bit of help, then have your left hand open and your right hand open, your palms facing up. If you're feeling like you need, you need the world to stop spinning <laughs> and you just um, have so much energy to burn and you've got a lot to give and you just feel like you're like, ah, going, turn your palms down and push against the ground. I mean, push, uh, let your hands rest, the palms rest on the knees. And if you want a little bit of both, the left hand is going to palm up, perceiving, and the right hand is going to face palm down, giving. And we have a day coming up dedicated to why left, why right, and that has to do with the masculine and feminine energies in yoga. And so um, whichever uh, position you want to take with your hands, Allow your eyes to float closed. Letting that breath go from the controlled, forced, intentional inhales and exhales to easy breathing. If you're still winded from our sun salutations, then a wonderful way to snap back quickly. It takes effort, but it's worth it. I think it's a real, really beautiful moment that happens when I do this is to actually go to silent breathing. Let your body adjust to do what it needs to do so that you breathe so silently that your ears cannot hear your breath. I learned that from one of my absolute favorite yoga teachers. And no matter how much I'm panicking, if I have the wherewithal to know that I'm panicking, I can stop myself by using silent breath. There's no mantra I'm going to give you. Just want you to sit in this experience that you offered to yourself. You showed up to your mat. Today is day six. It's Sunday for those of you who are doing this with me live day by day. But regardless of what day it is, it is day six, you are, you are on the journey. Okay, from this very quiet place. Bring your two hands together. Whatever that commitment is that you are letting do the work on you that it needs to do through this challenge, honor it. Because in doing so, you are honoring yourself. When we honor ourselves, we model that for those around us. When they see that modeled for them, they honor themselves. And little by little, the world becomes a better place because we show up together in our wholeness. 
impacting effectively.